Oh, oh my God. Uh, hello, and uh, welcome to another episode of Auto Archive. Um, we're gonna be diving into uh, some of my uh, collection of back issues of Car Styling Magazine. We've got an interesting one that we're gonna dive into. Uh, let's check it out. All right, so uh, this is gonna be a brief one. Uh, I was just looking through some of this stuff while recording another episode, uh, and it got me very angry, so I felt like I had to get into it. Now, uh, there's tons of cool stuff in here, but we're just going to look at one car in particular. It's the development of the Cadillac Seville. The interesting thing about Car Styling Magazine is it showed you the full development of cars as they were getting made ready for production, not just as they were put into production. So we get to see all sorts of like dead ends and sort of styling exercises and concepts on the way to the car as it was made. Look at this Cadillac concept from, and the year may shock you, the winter of 1972. Cadillac could have made an incredibly cool and very forward looking like semi fastback Rolls Royce roof back styled car. Now, uh, Cadillac actually did go into production with a car of a similar style. That would be the Bustleback Seville of the uh, late 70s and early 80s. Uh, but this early design exercise looks amazing and is a classic example of the Bill Mitchell sort of super trim, very European style design. Uh, and if we flip to the next page, we get to see even more of it. And look at how cool these things are. Look at, I must say, uh, as a fan of Cadillacs, uh, this front end is exactly what made me hugely pissed off. This is the kind of face which you would recognize on a late 80s or early 90s Cadillac on something like a Cadillac STS, one of the later Seville's. Uh, super narrow, super aero, super trim. And this is the early 1970s when this is being done. This one, I think it says, is the La Scala design of 1973, which ended up becoming the first Seville as we knew it. We also got to see some nice color photos of uh, this really excellent looking um, European style Cadillac design. And indeed, one of the fun things about Car Styling Magazine is you get to see all of these stuff that they discuss. These are Pininfarina designs of the time, which directly predate and would have inspired this. Indeed, here is the Fiat 131 Coupe, uh, which was a Pininfarina car, which is super angular, which was sort of designed to get back at Bertone, which was the one that was really leading the um, sharp edged design style. Now, I was trying to remember what year exactly the Fiat 130 Coupe came out when I realized, I think I actually have an issue of it uh, that details it if I run through my old stack and here we are. Here's the Fiat 130 Coupe, and we've got a full design history of it right at the front. Um, this is, these are one of my favorite cars. They, uh, they, the, they made three different versions of it, a Coupe, a station wagon, and the sedan, uh, and they each got slightly different names. Uh, and yeah, super trim. Uh, these were not exactly super well-remembered cars, but the design was hugely influential. And why can I say that? Because I just showed you the book where it was super influential on Cadillac. In any case, it's one of the reasons why I love running through these things and uh, one of the reasons why I think they're informative uh, and why I uh, continue to talk out of my ass on the internet all the time because I feel like I'm informed because I read these things. Uh, and uh, hopefully you do too, uh, having watched these videos where I go through some of them. If there's stuff that you think I glossed over uh, or if you actually have some back issues that I don't have and that you want to sell, uh, email us at tips at jalopnik.com uh, and uh, stay tuned for next week's episode. There's a lot more to cover. Ciao.